Mixing skin colors for anime girls is not as hard as you think. Today I want to show you a simple process that I use all the time in my anime paintings. I also want to share with you my favorite colors to make this process even easier. Anime girls usually have peachy, fair, and uniform looking skin. To get to this color, you need to start with an orange base. And then you can adjust to make it lighter by adding water. Now let me show you how I mix it on a palette and the consistency of the paint you're looking for. First, grab your red or yellow, I'm starting with the red here, and make it a puddle. Then I rinse my brush and grab some yellow and mix it up in there. This still looks too red, so I need to grab more yellow. Now, I think this is a pretty good skin color and you can test it out on the paper. But this is kind of the consistency you're looking for. It's not super runny, but it does have quite a bit of water in there. One thing I want to mention here is I would like to suggest you to use a white ceramic palette because it's very easy for you to see exactly what color you're mixing on the palette. And once you put it on the paper, it's very close to what you see here. Now that you know the mixing process, let's talk about the color choices. There's no specific red or yellow you have to use to mix a skin color. Different red and yellow combinations do give a slightly different appearance of the color, but you can experiment to see what combinations works for you. Let's try a few combinations from the colors that I have. The first one is Permanent Alizarin Crimson and Lemon Yellow. I'm going to use the same process that I showed you before, and I'm going to put down the mixed color here. Next one is quinacridone red and permanent yellow light. Next we have quinacridone coral and new gamboge. Lastly, we have Opera Pink, which is a super vibrant pink, and Nickel Azo Yellow, which is also very vibrant once you add some water. So that's the combination I'm gonna try. You can do your own experiment to see what is your favorite combination. But of course, you can adjust the proportion of the red or yellow you put in the skin color to make it more on the yellow side or more on the red side. Now let's talk about my favorite colors for skin, the quinacridone colors. The quinacridone colors are naturally vibrant and transparent. I was trying several shades from Daniel Smith and I discovered this one, quinacridone burnt orange, it just happened to be the perfect shade for anime girl's skin color. It doesn't even require mixing, so it makes the process so much easier. I constantly have this on my palette and when I'm ready to paint, usually I do a first wash of the skin to start the painting. I just need to add some water to dilute it to the right consistency and I'm ready to go. So let me show you what it looks like on paper. Out of the tube is really dark. It's like um, reddish brown. But as I mentioned, it's the right shade. You don't need to add anything else. Just add water and look how perfect it is. So this color is super versatile. It works with a lot of different characters with different hair colors or different clothes colors. But of course, you can adjust it to make it more on the reddish side or on the yellowish side. And to do that, we'll use the other two quinacridone colors. Quinacridone burnt scarlet and quinacridone gold. Let's first try it with quinacridone gold. So I diluted the quinacridone burnt orange and just added a little bit of quinacridone gold. And now this color is more yellowish. I usually use this color as a highlight for the skin. Now to make quinacridone burnt orange a little bit redder, I like to use quinacridone burnt scarlet. It looks a little bit redder than those tones above it because I didn't add as much water to it and also because it is the perfect reddish tone that I'm looking for. It is very useful for where skin creases or where the skin is under shadow or where a blush is required. Now to darken the skin, you can use the transparent brown. 
for example, burnt sienna and burnt umber. So I'm starting with the quinacridone burnt orange as the skin color. And I'm going to darken it by burnt umber. Now it gives you a rich chocolatey kind of skin. You can also use burnt sienna. Now this one gives you a darker orange tone. I should also mention that you can use quinacridone burnt scarlet and quinacridone gold to mix a really nice skin color. That's why these three colors are always on my palette. So that's how I mix a base color for skin. And I usually use this base color for the first two washes for the skin. Here I sketched a very simple head so I can show you how I put on those washes. So the first wash is usually just a flat wash for me to see where the skin is and to leave some highlights, for example, on the ear, on the nose, uh, the edges of the skin. Once the first wash is dry, I usually strengthen it with the same base color on the skin edges and creases to show the three-dimensional form of the skin. Now onto the shadows. The way I prefer to make shadows is simply adding purple and red to the skin tone I just mixed. I find just adding purple to the skin tone will neutralize it and makes the painting a little bit too flat. So I usually add some red and the skin looks more vibrant and more transparent. So let me show you how I mix it on palette. Here's the skin color I just mixed. Shadow color is usually a little bit stronger, so I'm grabbing some stronger purple to add to it. But because my skin color is not as strong as the shadow color, it's overtaken by the purple and now it looks too purple. What you can do is to start with a stronger skin color to match the strength of the purple. Now after I put in the purple, it started to look like a shadow color, but I find it too neutral. So this is where I'm adding red. Once it's applied on top of the first and second wash of the skin, it will make skin look vibrant. The consistency is about the same as the base color we mixed before, maybe very, very slightly thicker. Same as the red and yellow I talked about before. There's no specific purple you have to use to mix the shadow color. The only two things I want to mention is that you want to use a transparent and non-granulating purple for the best result. Opaque colors will make the painting flat, and the granulating colors will have pigments settle in the grooves of the paper, so the shadow will look dirty. So here's an example of the granulating colors. It has really beautiful texture, but it just doesn't work well for skin shadows. Let's test it out with two purple colors. The first one is Carbazole Violet. The red I'm using is just quinacridone burnt scarlet. The color looks nice and transparent and vibrant. Next one I'm going to use is quinacridone violet. This purple has a pinkish tone, so I don't need to add as much red. So this is also quinacridone burnt scarlet. Now that you know what kind of shadow color you want to achieve, there are so many possible combinations that you can experiment. Now back to this simple face to show how I use the shadow color. Once the skin is completely dry, I will layer the shadow color on top. For example, if the sun comes from this side, I will put this side of the face completely in shadow. Some shadows in the ear, and some shadows on the neck. 
You can also put some stronger shadows where the eye creases are. Last but not least, we can't forget about blush. Blush is usually my final layer, when everything else has been finalized for the skin. For me, there is no mixing required. I simply use my favorite blush colors and dilute it with water and apply it softly to the skin. My favorite color is the Vermilion Hue from Holbein. Once it's diluted, it's a really nice coral. And the other one is Quinacridone Coral from Daniel Smith. Once diluted, this one is more on the pink side. Blush is simply a light red or pink, so there are many other options you can try. So back to the face to finish it up. Now everything has dried, so I can apply the blush. It goes really well with the skin color and give it a nice glow and also define the lower edge of the eye. So after adding in the blush, it looks more three-dimensional and the blush gives the skin a healthy, nice glow. So this is my process and the summary of what we did today. I hope this serves as a starting point for you to start experiment and discover your own favorite method. Stay tuned for my future tutorials and if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments.